I heard an interesting comment this week on a podcast from Matt Herbert, co-founder of Tracksuit, that brand has perhaps done the worse job of branding itself than any brand. Brand is somewhat of an elusive character, adept at shape-shifting its way through the evolution of commerce. So we're going to take a look at the history of brand and its journey throughout the ages. More importantly, we'll see what shape it's taking in today's business landscape and why brand itself might just need to put on a tracksuit and get a rebrand. The concept of brand has evolved throughout history based on changes in commerce, technology and consumer behaviour. That's what I find really fascinating about brand itself. It's intrinsically linked to human behavior through both emotional needs and also monetary bias. So the concept of brand is as much understood through psychology as it is by philosophy or economics or sociology. So let's step back in time. Ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt brought about branding with simple practices like the marking of cattle to signify ownership or inscribing pottery with the maker's mark or their region. Even back then, the purpose of branding was really to establish value based on trust and quality. Moving on in time, the same practices continued as the Romans marked bricks with a stamp of the manufacturer, an early form of mass production where a maker's mark had yet to evolve into brand names, but identified again authenticity and quality. Now if you don't already know, I'm a big tea geek and the history of tea is really quite fascinating in so many ways. Tea is also recognized as being the first form of global currency, where bricks or discs of compressed dry leaf would be stamped with a mark of value or of the origin. These would often be used as barter for goods or to pay taxes along the Silk Road. So this is a fascinating example of product branding being attributed with a direct value. Now, we'll skip forward through medieval times, but to say it's where craft guilds began to certify quality and authenticity, and traders or merchants took branding quite global. But it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution that we saw the evolution of modern branding take shape. Mass production exploded with the Industrial Revolution from the 18th and 19th century, leading to the need for brand names and logos to differentiate products, and some of those earliest mass market products were consumer medicines. This boom in medicine brands was born from the smaller scale and more dubious remedies peddled by travelling salesmen with brand names such as Dr. Kilmer's Swamp Root or Hamlin's Wizard Oil. They were often no more than a high percentage of alcohol with occasional herbs and morphine, which no doubt served well in product sampling off the back of the wagon. These guys were perhaps the OG sales and marketing managers. No offense to any sales and marketing managers out there. The products were sold using a mix of showmanship and pseudoscience to sell their wares. As dodgy as it seems now, we can probably thank these early salesmen for introducing the concept of creative brand stories. But in the span of history, it's perhaps the invention of the printing press that revolutionized the way information was being disseminated the most. And it played a huge role in the development of modern branding. By enabling mass communication, the printing press allowed businesses to reach wider audiences with consistent and compelling messages. These were both written and through creative illustrations, which interestingly mirrors the use of memes to communicate the culture of the time. But it was the evolution of mass printing from the early 20th century that amplified this ability to advertise brand through newspapers, of course. Along with radio, companies like Coca-Cola and Kellogg's used advertising in newspapers and on radio to build colossal brand identities. With this newfound power to dominate the market emerged the era of brand management, with agencies like Procter & Gamble and General Motors. 
their ability to craft consistent messaging for a brand and to deliver a customer experience brought about the golden age of advertising and consumerism in America, fueled, of course, by television in the mid to late 20th century. This was very much the era of brand building through product advertising and the battle to win loyal long-term customers. Well-known terms such as USPs or unique selling points were coined in this era and advertisements were designed to capture attention and make a memorable impact through the use of jingles, slogans and eye-catching visuals. This is before most brands were really tracking product sales directly to their ads. So in terms of today's marketing funnel, from the 1950s through to the 80s, brand activity lived in the top of the marketing funnel to build awareness and consideration. However, David Ogilvy, often called the father of advertising, revolutionized brand marketing from this period with his emphasis on research and consumer insights. His work for brands like Rolls-Royce and Dove set new standards for creativity and effectiveness in advertising. Ogilvy's books Confessions of an Advertising Man and Ogilvy on Advertising are essential reading. The digital revolution we are now in transformed branding once again. The internet and social media allowed for direct engagement targeted and personalized marketing, and real-time feedback never possible before. The rise of e-commerce has allowed for greater tracking and reporting of measurable results from online campaigns through to online sales. In contrast to the pre-digital age, modern marketing strategies encompass the entire marketing funnel from awareness to retention with a more balanced approach across all stages of the funnel. The tools of the digital age have brought about a level of sophistication never available before, but it's also brought about a level of overreach into privacy that has triggered a shift in recent years. But we'll come back to that again soon. Essentially, social media allowed marketers to target people based on very specific demographics and personal traits. The traditional view of marketing spend has been to allocate some 60% on brand advertising and awareness around the top of the funnel, with 40% to more targeted product campaigns and activations towards the bottom of the funnel. However, the sudden ability to laser target consumers in the digital age who were far more likely to buy has brought about growth marketing or growth hacking where brands began to allocate the majority of their budget to those shorter term gains at expense of higher level brand marketing. But many people didn't realize their data was being made available to advertisers of platforms like Facebook and so began the fallout from major scandals and a drastic tightening of data controls for those social platforms and their advertisers. As it stands, the effectiveness of growth marketing has hit a ceiling of some sort, but it's still very relevant in the digital age, and targeted communication is an important part of the advertising mix. But this brought about a growing expectation from consumers that brands should have a conscience and behave ethically. In the digital age, Seth Godin emerged as a marketing guru. He introduced concepts like permission marketing, advocating for strategies based on gaining consumer consent before engagement. His book, Purple Cow, emphasized the importance of creating remarkable products first. Godin's focus on storytelling, ethical marketing, and community building has significantly influenced modern marketing practices. So we are now seeing a return to top of funnel brand awareness, or tofu, where we can better communicate brand values and align with consumer needs. Brands have begun to realize that neglecting their future potential customers is short-sighted, and a shift back towards the traditional 60-40 rule appears to be happening. This correction balances the need to build customer loyalty and lifetime value with more immediate gains that you find through the targeted marketing and activations. But the 
challenge in brand marketing at the top of the funnel for awareness and consideration is how you communicate measurable value of your brand building efforts to the stakeholders in the business. The CEO, the CRO and the board want to see trackable value, thanks of course to the evolution of growth marketing where those were more intrinsically linked together. They haven't of course forgotten though that a strong brand does help you acquire more customers and also increases the lifetime value of those customers. But we all have someone to report to and the digital age is all about accountability and data. The only way to measure overall brand sentiment and product preference has been through expensive market research. This has only been within reach of the larger enterprises who can really afford to gather this data through custom surveying methods, which are carried out by the likes of Nielsen, Kantar or IRI. But as we've seen, there is always a new development brought about by technology and as you'd expect with the rapid evolution of smart tech and AI, a solution to democratize access to market research would not be far away. But AI in most cases will be nothing without human input, at least not until AI wipes us all out. Seriously though, to get genuine high quality data in the area of brand sentiment, you literally have to go out there and ask huge samples of the population. AI can help analyze the results, but there is no shortcut to getting that input data. One of the innovations that we've seen in many industries is towards live tracking of data through beautifully designed dashboards and insights. My wife, for example, has moved us to a home power supplier which shows you your power usage live in the app and it tracks against historic use and projected spend. That kind of technology is rolling out to everyone but requires smart metering to be installed right there in your home. So you'd think to do the same thing with brand tracking through survey data would be an impossible task without, of course, extortionately high costs. But no, it's starting already. Meet Tracksuit. While on the job hunt, I started doing some research on innovative local startups who are doing exciting things in the brand marketing space. And that's how I found Tracksuit. My brother is also very involved in the New Zealand tech startup scene as a director, advisor and an investor, so he'd also suggested that I take a look at them. They've been running for about three years at the time of writing this, and they're growing fast and expanding from New Zealand into Australia, the US and UK markets. They provide those beautiful dashboards that I love with always on insights for your brand. They offer affordable market research and brand tracking at around a tenth of the cost of the outdated enterprise services that are afforded only by the largest brands. So you don't go to these guys for one-off projects. Tracksuit is more like your brand partner, keeping you informed with near real-time views of your brand recognition and sentiment. As a marketer, this allows you to strategically allocate spend towards longer term brand awareness, consideration and preference at the earlier stages of the customer journey, right through to the more immediate impact of performance marketing and brand activations at the bottom of the funnel, which is where customers make the purchasing decisions between you and your competitors. Ultimately, this allows you to build your brand for future customers and lifetime value with hard factual data to back up your decisions and, of course, beautiful reporting to show the stakeholders. So how the heck do they do this? Tracksuit's affordability and efficiency appear to be achieved through strategic data collection and leveraging of smart technology. By targeting multiple clients within the same category, Tracksuit can survey a broader audience and apply insights across different brands. This allows for cost sharing and, of course, economies of scale. They also utilize advanced analytics and AI, I imagine, to provide real-time actionable insights. The platform is designed to continuously collect and update data making it accessible through a dashboard which doesn't require a master's in statistics to understand. It enables clients to track brand health metrics over time and to benchmark their performance against their competitors. So finally, we have sophisticated market insights accessible to a broader range of businesses, which I love. It's democratizing access to brand building based on actionable data. 
Brand has been such an elusive character throughout history, and marketers have struggled to shed the shadow of the snake oil salesman. So do we finally have a more visible and honest face to the future of brand? If brand is simply what other people say about you when you're not in the room, how do we improve on who we are? If we can craft brand narratives that are not only aligned with basic human needs, but informed by innovative market research and always on insights like tracksuit, I think finally, yes, we can say brand is getting a rebrand.